Hey everybody, I'm Michael DiTullo and welcome to my studio. Today we're gonna to be diving into part two of that three-part series that I'm doing for Wacom and Autodesk. In today's episode, I'm gonna be taking one of the concepts from the thumbnail sheet that I developed in the last episode and bringing it into Autodesk Fusion 360 to refine. Now I'll be using Autodesk Fusion 360 on a Mac along with a Wacom Cintiq Pro monitor, which is just a really fun way to kind of interact with CAD. And I, I find that it helps me kind of find the forms a little bit better. One of the many things I love about Fusion is that it combines a lot of different tools that you would typically see in different CAD platforms. So while I'm starting this model, I'm actually gonna be opening up the form tool so I can get a really nice soft form. One of the things that I wanna do in this smartphone concept is make it feel a little bit softer, a little more ergonomic. In the last episode, I talked about how a lot of smartphones just feel like these anonymous bricks. So I want to have this soft form that recognizes the fact that it's supposed to be in our hands, it's supposed to go in our pockets, and it should just feel right. I'm kind of nick nicknaming this concept the river rock, and so I wanna have that kind of sense to it. Once I have my form all sewn up, I'll export that back over into the model framework, where now I can start really tweaking it and dividing it. So I'm actually gonna slice off part of it here so that I can get a flat surface, which will be my screen. And then I'm gonna slice a secondary band um, that I'm gonna make a, a really nice bezel. One of the things I wanna do with this bezel is I wanna make this a really nice kind of a knurled area so that it has a nice texture to it. Knurling is that, that kind of diamond texture that you often see in metal parts, especially in things like the crown of a watch where you, where you change the hour and minutes on a watch. And that, those little textures just feel one, really tactile. Two, it's a texture that we're used to feeling with our fingertips. And three, hopefully make this thing a little bit less slippery. I'd like to make this phone robust enough so that you didn't feel like you needed to have a case with it. So having these crisp edges and textures are really gonna help with that. As we're getting over to the back side of the phone, I really want to have this nice, crisp, sculptural line. Um, and that, that line is gonna scoop out so that we get a natural kind of bump out for the camera. Instead of designing a phone and then adding a brick on top of it to accommodate the camera, I wanna really make it feel like it was designed for this. So there'll still be this kind of profile that bumps out, but it'll feel much more integrated. And I think it'll just have a much nicer feel. In reality, we're talking about the phone's about 70 millimeters by 145 millimeters tall. The camera bumps only three millimeters. Next thing I'm gonna do is work on a lens that covers up all the different camera lenses. So this phone, I'm gonna show three camera lenses and a really large flash. And I wanna do that again in a really unique way. So I worked up this really soft guitar pick shape that is really fun, doesn't feel quite so man-made or artificial, it feels much more organic. And, and again, this feels like a more of a complete object. I really love a lot of subtle surface development. I feel like subtle surfacing makes the difference between a really well-developed object and something that feels maybe a little bit too generic. So around this camera lens, I'm gonna put this kind of off-angle chamfer that's just gonna give your finger like a nice ridge around that area, you, you'll really feel it, even though it'll only be very subtle. It's only gonna go one millimeter deep and maybe three millimeters wide, something like that. But I think the interesting thing about having details like this is one, it gives us another area to break the textures, and two, it really catches the light. So as we start to render this up in the next episode, all these little things will really show off. And I think we'll make for a very interesting product. So typically when I do these, you know, we would be working up three or four concepts at a time. We'd be pulling in internals from the client if we could get a battery and a PCB and anything, anything that we could build the cat around to make sure that what we're building is, is buildable, uh, at least to the best of our knowledge at this early stage. Uh, but for this exercise, we're playing kind of fast and loose and just developing a concept quickly. One of the other things I love about Fusion is that in normal times, I travel a lot and I travel internationally. I'm always going to work with clients. So 
I love that in Fusion, all of the files are stored in the cloud. So if one of my CAD modelers is working on something and he or she saves it, I can get an instant update and then log in and see exactly what they've done. I could share files with the clients really easily because I could send them spinnable links. Um, and I really love that capability to Fusion. That's just a little bit different than the other CAD packages that we've used. All right, everybody, thanks for joining. That's all for episode two. I hope you enjoyed this really quick look at how I will develop a concept from a really rough thumbnail into a, a quick model so we can get a sense of what the design is gonna look like in 3D. In the next episode, I'll be showing you how I take this really quick 3D model and render it up so it becomes a client-facing deliverable. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and I'll see you next time.